five chefs all want to become the next professional MasterChef champion. Today, they face their first challenge. Three tests set by chef Monica Galetti, seasoned diner Greg Wallace, and two Michelin-starred British chef Marcus Waring. I'm very excited to be cooking for Marcus Waring. He's one of my idols. Cooking for him is, is going to be an honour to go. I can't, I can't believe it, I can't put it into words. Competitions are a chance to push yourself to the limit. And I think Master Chef Professionals will really help me do this. I want to be as good as I can. It means everything. It's, it's all I've got. Only the best will make it through to the quarter final. I'm just looking for skill, passion, determination, and then we'll get some great food. Five fresh faces, all looking nervous. You have no idea how good they are until you taste their food. Welcome to Professional MasterChef. First test is your own signature dish. I realise you're nervous, but I would like you to try and focus on what you're here to do. And that is to cook your hearts out and show us why you're here. We're looking for a star. We're looking for a great chef. One hour to really impress. That's important because one of you will be leaving us at the end of this test. Off you go. I'm a chef de party. Where I work at the moment is a busy bistro restaurant in Clapham. At university for four years and then kind of fell into working into a kitchen. Since then, it's so all involved and it takes everything out of you. Be up to 18 hours in a day, and sometimes you think, what are you doing to yourself? But I wouldn't want to work in any other job. Service. Jonathan, how are you? Very well, thank you. What are you doing for us today? So I'm going to do a nice bit of cod with a walnut pesto crumb, and then caramelised cauliflower puree, mm. and then a dressing of cockles, sherry vinegar, artichoke, and pickled walnuts as well. I like the sounds of your dish. What's your background? Well, I went to university, did physics and astronomy for four years, <laughs> did a master's in that, did all that, and then straight after I finished that, I was like, right, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to, I actually <laughs> like cooking more than this. What should we call you, professor? All right, professor. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a PhD, but yeah, you can call me a <laughs> technically master of physics if you want to call me that. Right? <laughs> I like the sounds of, of Jonathan's dish, that the pickled walnuts, you know, it's not something you normally have with fish. The pickled walnut is a, is a lovely texture. It's got a beautiful nutty background flavour. Monica, that's the flavour we look for when we're basing our fish with butter. It's a nutty flavour. That's why we call it brown nut butter. I think the nuts is a clever idea. I like it. I'm currently sous chef in a restaurant in Noma in Northern Ireland. The thing that makes me a good chef is I'm hard working. I like to have fun. You can't work in the kitchen if you can't have fun as well. As a chef, I believe in the classical techniques, cooking classic French dishes, but you can put your modern twist on it. And I love the industry, I love food. I'm passionate about food, about growing food, thinking food, dreaming food, eating food, tasting food. It's all, it's all, it's all I think, it's all I want to do. Aaron. Welcome to the kitchen. You look like you've settled in really well. Look at a big smile on his face, right? <laughs> Thanks, Chef. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, that's what we do for a living, so, you know, it sh shouldn't be any different. It's just a different environment. Tell me what you're cooking for us today. I got a nice lamb loin. Going to do a lovely shepherd's pie on the side of that there. I know you'll like that. Um, and with the lamb loin, I'm going to do a potato rosti. We'll make a lovely pea puree. Aaron, sorry, how old are you? 22. That's young. 
it's young. You may not have the same experience as some of the others. Yeah, but that's my advantage. To, I'm young, I know what's in, I know what's trendy, I'm more energetic. To me, that's an advantage. So youth is your advantage? Yeah, of course. Good man. If it's you... not your advantage, Craig. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if, if youth is an advantage? We're both out of here. <laughs> Aaron from Northern Ireland, what a character. Love the sound of his dish. Interesting, wrapping the lamb in potato. I hope the potato doesn't burn before the lamb's cooked. Plus also the resting. I hope the potato doesn't get soggy. Aaron's making us a shepherd's pie. I love a good shepherd's pie. Fifteen minutes gone, all right? I work for a restaurant group. I've been with them it's nearly two years now, and I love it. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Yeah, well, I got a job as a waitress in a, in a golf club close to where I live. And was always in the kitchen, and then just begged and begged and begged for a job. And they said to me, you won't last two weeks. And I never looked back. I never, ever looked back. I only ever want to be the best at anything. Even my dad once said to me, if you were sw sweeping the street, you should be the best at it. Catherine. Hello, Chef. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Good. Tell me, what are you cooking for us today? Stone bass, frog's legs, which I'm going to wrap in potato and deep fry. A nice scallop there, a pea puree. I'm going to finish it with a sort of a cream reduction. You're very calm and relaxed for such a big dish. <laughs> Has it been done before, Catherine? No. No? No. Have you timed it, Catherine? No. You've never timed it? I have, but not, not from start to finish. Can that actually be done in an hour? I'm going to do my best. I've got, well, like one opportunity. This is it. Catherine, she's using stone bass, frog's legs, scallops, samphire, asparagus, sauce. Great list of ingredients. What concerns me with this dish is she's never eaten it before. She's not put the whole thing together. She's set herself a lot of work for today, which is good. I want to see them push themselves. You've got 25 minutes left, all right? 25 minutes. I started working as a kitchen porter in a local pub when I was 13, 14, washing dishes on a weekend. Now I'm in London working as a junior sous chef for a top hotel with three rows in. What really excites me about cooking is like the new technology that we have, pushing the boundaries with the new chemicals that's coming in, elevating it to a different level every time. If you don't have flavour in a dish, then you don't have nothing. If you've got good presentation and no flavour, then there's, there's not much point. Scott. Hello. I see you've got some pineapple and coconut milk there. Yes, Things chef. that I like a lot. What, are you making a dessert then? Yep. Hot and cold rice pudding with pineapple jam, coconut gel, charred pineapple. You know, it's a, it's a massive statement coming in here and, and doing a dessert in the, in the first yeah. round. I thought I, that's why I wanted to do it. If I could do this in an hour and do it right, then it would probably get me a good chance of going through the next one. Mate, I can't argue with you. As long, I mean, it is a hell of a statement. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest sweet tooth standing next to me. Mate, I, and, you know. and it is. You have got all the wonderful flavours of the tropics, and I'm actually really looking forward to it. Thank you. Scott's our only chef who is cooking us a dessert, and for that reason alone, he is standing out from the crowd, and I like that. Hot and cold rice pudding. I love rice pudding. The important thing for me is making sure it's got the rice cooked correctly. I'm going to be really interested to see the presentation of this because I, I really don't know how you're going to serve hot and cold rice pudding together. I'm currently working in a large to medium hotel. My role is the, you know, the sous chef. I'm so passionate for food, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, my dad thinks I'm mad because he works normal hours, so, and I work a lot of hours. My girlfriend never gets to see me, so, <laughs> yeah, it's, they, think, they all think I'm mad, but it's good, I enjoy it. I've got uh, a little boy, he's uh, two and a half now, 
I want, I want to do well in this competition because I want to make him proud. Service, please. Sorry, Billy, how old are you, mate? I'm 22. Whoa. Tell me, what are you cooking for us today? Uh, I'm doing a fillet of lamb, just going to pan fire. It's fond of potatoes, PPRA, and then I'm doing some sweet bread nuggets. Wow. Why are you here? Why have you put yourself under this pressure? Now, I love to show people, you know, what I'm all about, so hopefully I can show you judges what I'm about. What are you about? I'm about good honest food, cooked well, nicely presented, and uh, something the customer can enjoy, not just what chefs can enjoy. Billy! <laughs> Mate, you know, you, you know you're talking the talk, don't you? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> you know what's happened to our expectations now, don't you? Food real chef. <laughs> good, <man. laughs> good luck. Cheers, thank you. Billy's got a lot to do. He's got his fondants to get on straight away. You know as well as I do, they take a good length of time to get that butter to absorb. I like he's putting little nuggets of the sweetbreads on there with a bit of texture. I really like the sound of Billy's dish. It's good, honest cookery. You've got just four minutes. Come on, please. Four minutes. Time's up. Stop! Catherine, stop! Jonathan, would you like to come up here, please? Jonathan has cooked cod with a walnut crust and cockles. On top of a caramelised cauliflower puree, it is served with a pickled walnut, artichoke and caper garnish and a sherry vinegar dressing. You seem to have created a plate of beige. It needs a contrast somewhere. I disagree. You disagree? I yep. disagree. I don't think there is any other way to dress this dish, to be really honest with you. I think you've done a fantastic job. I hope it tastes as good. I like the crunch of the nuts you've got across the top of the fish. I like your sweet puree. However, for me, it's a little too sharp. Jonathan, the caramelised cauliflower puree is an absolute star. I could have a bowl of that with this fish. The artichokes are cooked wonderfully. The capers, however, is just too many on the plates, and I think that's what's bringing too much acidity. The fish is beautifully cooked. The nutty crunch on the surface works really well. This is a dish you would be happy to sit by the sea and just in, in, in a great restaurant. You've really captured it very well. I really, really like the dish. You've just got too much acid on it. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Professor. Thank you, John. Massively relieved. Yeah, the comments from the judges were pretty much all positive, so I think I should have done enough, hopefully. Fingers crossed, but... 22-year-old Aaron has made a lamb's loin wrapped in potato rusty with a pea puree, roasted carrots and asparagus. He served it with a shepherd's pie and red wine jus. I would eat the lamb this pink. You, know, you might have problems setting it into a restaurant that pink. Personally, I like my meat very on the rare side. Did you seal the meat before you coated it? No, no, it didn't seal the meat. You didn't seal no. the meat. To put potato around a piece of meat, you need to seal it, and then that keeps the potato crispy. The best thing about this dish for me, Aaron, is the shepherd's pie. What I like about it, you put the Worcester sauce in, it tastes of lamb, and, and I love the potato. Put it under the salamander, and you've got yourself a good little dish there. You definitely can cook. There's skills here. I like the fact you try to be different with the potatoes and show us another element. Your food tastes good, but you've got to get the little bits absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. I made a few schoolboy errors. Things weren't perfect. In the restaurant industry, that can be enough to send you home. 
31-year-old Catherine has made stone bass, scallops and frog's legs wrapped in potato strings. They're served with an asparagus pea puree, samphire and a cream reduction. I like your presentation. What's let it down for me is your fish yep. on the plate here. You've overdone it yep. on colouring the skin. OK, your pan was too hot. You know what, to be fair, Catherine, I don't think you should be as disappointed as you are, to be really honest with you. I actually love the cooking of the fish underneath. I think you've done a really good job of it. You've just got the skin, obviously, a little bit dark. It doesn't make it right, but actually, it, it's not too bad. The frog's eggs don't really have a place on this dish, to, to, to be fair. They've been in the deep fat fryer too long. Mm. I think if you'd have taken this out of the equation and focused a little bit more on the plate, you'd have had a really good dish in front of us. OK. The pea puree is wonderful, but there's not enough on the plate. Mm. Scallops, I like them cooked like that. Lovely, golden. For me, there's some wonderful aspects to your dish. I don't think you've tasted this whole dish together, and it shows. I think you can cook a bit, mate. I think you've taken on too much for an hour. To be honest, I feel a bit gutted. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't my best plate of food. The judges' comments were better than I thought they'd be, but oh, I'm glad it's over. 22-year-old Billy has served his cannon of lamb with sweetbread nuggets, fondant potatoes, a pea puree, asparagus, and a red currant reduction. Have you always cooked lamb that way? Yeah. It's still going bad. The sweetbreads, even though you poach them first, it's still not quite cooked enough. It's not pleasant. If this was served up to me, I would have to send it back. <sighs> There's only a couple of things on this plate, from the pea to the asparagus, that are probably done correct. The rest is all wrong. OK. Billy, I'm sorry. Thank you, Chef. Thanks for your feedback anyway, Chef. Could have done a lot better. I know I'm a better chef than what I produced. There's a few positives, but just the whole cooking of the lamb was really undercooked. Absolutely gutted, I can't believe it. Scott's hot and cold rice pudding is made up of a hot rice pudding cube and a cold coconut rice pudding, topped with crunchy rice. They're served with a pineapple jam, char-grilled pineapple, and a coconut rum gel. You've refined uh, a rice pudding, but rice pudding is a comfort food. And the test is going to be whether or not that you've been able to keep that within this dish. Now that I've eaten it, I can now see that this is a dish that was never going to comfort me or hug me mm. like I expect rice pudding to do. But I, I like it a lot. You've done a very, very good job with a very basic ingredient um, and sort of brought it to life with the fabulous flavours, the textures of the, the little grilled pineapple circles, the deep fried square on the side, the warmth. And I love the little crunchy rice on top. It gives it the texture that actually That's just finished the dish. Yeah. Very nice. I think you've done a fantastic job. Thank you. The, the flavours of the pineapple and the, and the hints of the coconut coming through. There's a marriage made in heaven. You've got some lovely flavours in there. You've got pineapple, you've got coconut, you've got a hint of vanilla in there as well. I mean, that's very good. You took a gamble and I think it's paid off today. Thank you. Did a dessert for the first one, so it's a pretty bold statement for a chef to do. And... They gave me good comments back and I'm, really, I'm quite chuffed in all fairness of it, how it went, you know.
Well, that was a pretty decent standard. I mean, pick the bones out of that lot. We have got a group of chefs. Yeah. It makes the judging a bit harder, but that's what we want. It was never going to be easy. For me today, Jonathan and Scott stood out, both of them. I loved Jonathan's dish, the, your beigeness of it. Uh, I, I thought he executed it very well. I'm looking at this wonderful crust of nuts on top of this beautifully cooked fish, you know, and everything around that were natural colours. It's a winner. Scott, technically, brilliant. I loved his dessert today. I think it takes a lot of skill to take a great bowl of rice pudding and, and, and make it something you'd serve in a high-end restaurant. I love the way that he's cooked today. I think he deserves a place to go through. What about the others? Catherine was beating herself up when she got here at the table. Absolutely no confidence at all. Really thought she'd messed up. Actually, she hadn't messed up at all. All Catherine needed was just some encouragement. The dish I was most looking forward to eating was Billy's lamb with the sweetbreads. Unfortunately for Billy, quite a few mistakes. That lamb was so rare, it was purple. It's such a shame with Billy with his dish because the concept was good, the ingredients was good. He just didn't pull it off today. I don't know, it's just the pressure but I should have done better than that. It's done now, I can't do anything about it. Controversially, and I know you two won't agree, but I really like Aaron. I know there's mistakes on his plate, but as eating a dish goes, I really like what that young man's doing. There's aspects on the main plate that were sort of missing and errors were, were all over the plate. Um, the shepherd's pie, I really like that, and you sort of wanted more of it. Aaron is, is a young chef who obviously can cook. You know, he was trying to impress us today, uh, which is where he's gone hugely wrong. I just don't want my name to be called to go home. I don't want to go home yet. I like it here. It's pretty cool. It's come down to Billy, Catherine and Aaron. They've all made mistakes today, and it's going to cost one of them. I love the atmosphere in the kitchen today. Yeah, there's errors, but we really had good food. I enjoyed it, thank you. The chef leaving us today is... Billy. Yeah, gutted. I knew it would come in, to be honest, though. After what I put up, it weren't, weren't good enough. To get this far and to cook for Marcus is a massive privilege. I take away the feedback and hopefully build on it and get better in the future. Congratulations. Congratulations. But don't let it go to your head, because what comes next is going to really, really push you. What's our skills test, Monica? Today, I'd like them to build up a meal fight using caramel twills. So they're going to have puff pastry and caramel twills as the layers between the cream. That's exactly what we're going to get. Whoa, mate, that is tricky. Right, so the first thing that they will have to do is to make their caramel. So I'm using glucose. If they use just sugar, the caramel will be too, too hard. And you might find, you know, a piece of shard of caramel will go through your mouth if it ends up too thick. Wow. To make my layers, I need a template so that the milfoy is all the same size. There you go. Caramel is ready. Just leave that for a minute or so to cool down. I'm going to use this plastic just to measure up the bottom layer of the milfoy. Take this caramel and make it into a powder. Smoking. Dust it back onto a baking sheet, which then makes a very fine layer. Wow, that's ridiculously fine. One fit of the sneezes and it's all over. So let's hope there's no shaky hands. And it goes in the oven. 
Now I'm going to make my layers. Mm. Stunning. Amazing. This is a tricky test for our chefs. You can almost see through it, Greg. There we have it. That's my meal for it, layered with caramel twills. That is a work of art. Some desserts just look too pretty to attack, don't they? Look at it. Shall we? That caramel is so ridiculously thin, it just melts on your tongue. That's beautiful. If our chefs get anywhere near that, I'll be really impressed. If you don't mind, I think I might give them a few clues. Well, think about it, yeah. <laughs> First up, it's sous chef Aaron, who received mixed feedback for his signature dish. Walking into to the skills test, it's gonna be nerve wracking, could be anything. Monica is very serious. Hopefully I can make her smile. Um, yeah, hopefully. What we want you to do is make a milfoy. The bottom layer, pastry. Yeah. The next two layers, caramel. Yeah. Do you think you can do this? Yeah, pastry is definitely not my, my strong air, but, but I'll, I'll give it a go. Aaron, we're giving you 20 minutes to make us a milfoy. Okay. Over to you, my friend. Off you go. You only need one slice of pastry. Uh, okay, so just one slice of pastry? Yeah, yeah. At, okay. at the bottom. Your caramel may be slightly too thick. You may have to think up something clever to thin it out. Good lad, good start. You've got three minutes, which is enough time. Hey, hey. well done, mate. How about that? You all right? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> Aaron, now it's very difficult, you know, for, for a chef who, who's not skilled in, in pastry to, to come into a test like this, you know, but you, you eventually got there, made the caramel. I would have liked to have seen you actually serve the blended yes. caramel, okay, because it gives a, a finer texture. So if you see. That's really thick. Yep. It's, it's really hard to eat, and, and when shards like that, you could have probably cut yourself yeah, yeah. as well. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Off you go. Thank you. You did okay. I'm feeling okay. I'm a little bit disappointed with, with some of the things went wrong, but I've learned something that I haven't done before, which is always good on the chef's repertoire, so it's good. Next, it's Scott, whose original take on a rice pudding was the star signature dish. A bit nervous, a bit excited. It's always nice to, to feel a bit of a, a rush and a bit of a pressure. Well, that's part of the job, that's why you do it. You know? You're quite confident in pastry, aren't you? A little bit, yeah. 20 minutes, Scott, off you go. Hmm. Halfway, you still got 10 minutes left. It looks a good uh, milfoy. Um, I think you got a bit carried away with the amount of creme pat that you had on there. If you can imagine, the layers are getting heavier and heavier. Yeah. Um, the caramel has then cracked. 
it needs to be a very fine layer of, of caramel. If I was to eat this, I'd possibly break a tooth or, or cut myself. That would come up for your afternoon tea, you'd clap your hands in delight and then you'd look, look on in consternation when you realised you couldn't get through it with your fork. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Off you go. Thank you. It's not bad. He knows how to make a caramel and decorate a meal for you. Mm. You can't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit nervous at the end, playing it up. Just to get it right, it started, the caramel started to crack. I made the caramel, it just wasn't the, the way that she intended it to be, you know, but uh, it wasn't too bad. Sous chef Catherine impressed with her signature dish, even though trying to do too much in the time scale caused errors. Monica's skills test is scary. I've just got to keep a level head. At the end of the day, I'm a chef. I should, I should be able to look at something and know what to do with it. You've got 20 minutes to do a meal for you. Off you go. OK. Caramel is on. You've had five minutes. You've got 15 left. Feel better now? Honest answer? No. It's set now. Whack it all in. Oh, magic powder. Oh, well done. You're going to have to move. You've got five minutes left. Time. Oh, you may just do it in the nick of time. Two minutes. Hey. You've got time. That's it. Your time's up. <laughs> <laughs> All done, Catherine. How you feel now? Gutted. Gutted. I can't even look at it. Well, that's messy. Oh, no. It's seeping out all over the place. Your caramel is really, really nice. You just didn't have enough time to cut it properly. But what you do have is a very light golden caramel. And you could still eat this because that caramel is so thin. Mm. Catherine, thank you very much. <laughs> Off you go. Thank you. I like her fine. Mm, so do I. I must be getting softer than me. I walked in, I just wanted to run out. I thought about it. At the end, it looked bad, but they said it was... the caramel was good, and I suppose that's what the skills test was about. So, yeah, it possibly went better than, than I thought. Finally, it's 30-year-old Jonathan who won high praise for his pan-roasted cod. Put your apron on, Professor. Monica's skills test is the one I'm worried about most, just for the pure reason that I haven't had the training me to go through the basics. I could slip up majorly. Jonathan, off you go, mate. Looking at everything, thinking, <clears throat> Usually there for a reason, so uh, unless there's a couple of uh, red herrings. Five minutes gone. How's that all? Got 15 minutes left there. Oh, we should carry on talking. It goes a lot slower then. <laughs> Get that calling. Yep. There we go. Go on, Jonathan. Good lad. And what an idea it was. Splendid idea. It all just comes flooding back, all this pastry stuff. You've got four minutes, Jonathan, so a bit rapid, please. Plastic off. What 
are you doing with that? Three layers. One's pastry, you've already got that. The next two are caramel. Okay, so there's two caramel on top. Oh, so well done. Get it on. Oh, oh my, oh, God. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Yeah. I do not want to do that again. <laughs> oh. You're shaking hands, mate. What does this competition do to people? It's yeah, it's horrible. You just it's bad enough when you're in a busy service, but in these conditions it's crippling. You made the caramel really well. It's still thin enough to be able to eat that. That is an edible caramel. But your approach is too relaxed at the beginning because the bottom part shows for me the chef who has worked in the pastry. And with two minutes left, this is your top layer. Dog's dinner, the top layer. I'm actually quite impressed with the fact that you cut yourself out a little shape to dust the sugar over. Pretty good. Jonathan, thank you very much. Off you go, mate. Bye-bye. If he'd have got his bum in gear yeah. halfway through instead of the last minute, we'd have had a very, very good meal for him. I think I kind of worked it out in the end and put something on the plate that was edible, at least, even if it did look not as desired. Overall, moderately happy. The four chefs here, they all managed to give us some kind of meal for you. I'm going to see these four in the next round with Marcus, and I've actually got high expectations for all of them. Marcus Waring was one of the youngest chefs in the country to win a Michelin star. The second came soon after. To get to his level, you've got to have determination, um, and you've got to be able to, to put in the hard work. And I think that's how he's got where he is, because, yes, he's a very talented chef, but he's had the ambition to, to go further. This dish is Cumbrian spring lamb. Out of all of the things that remind me of my childhood, this is it. Lamb was the best roast that we cooked in our house. My father never liked any blood in his meat. And the lamb, we just about got away with it because it was always cooked on the bone. So we had the opportunity of giving Dad the outer bit and we would have the inner bit, so it was cooked as beautiful and pink. We're going to use in three different parts of lamb. We're going to be using the shoulder, the rump and the rack. I'm going to start with the braised shoulder. All I'm doing is just sealing the meat, just getting a little bit of colour. That's all I want, nothing more. Take this garnish. Herbs and a mere poire of vegetables are added to the shoulder followed by the chicken and lamb stock. Cartouche, and then just push it inside like so. And then into the oven. Into the pan, put the lamb rump skin side down. And now I've just put the rack in, we're gonna cook them both at the same time. When you've got this beautiful marinade, put it into the pan. It's just more flavor. I really am enjoying it. Just watching the meat change colour, knowing that the, the more you keep basting it, it's just getting better and better and better. I love it, absolutely love it. I don't want it to be hot. They need to be served just warm so that they hold that moisture. Hot meat, and it will just bleed all over the plate. The first garnish is mint puree mixed into green beans. I'm just going to give a splash of the malt vinegar. This reminds me of home. Mum and Dad, they used to chop up the mint, cover it with malt vinegar, put it on the table, and that was your mint sauce. This is exactly the same flavour, it's just in a little bit more refined. After cooking in the oven for over an hour, the shoulder is ready. Grab a hold of the bone, and it pulls out like that. If the bone doesn't come out, it's not cooked. Now we're ready to plate. And just a drizzle of sauce. Just like a classic gravy. Delicious.
This is my take on roast lamb. Serve with pea puree, radish, minted green beans. Not quite like mum used to do it, but I'm sure it tastes just as good. In front of you, you've got the shoulder, you've got the rump, and you've got the rack. I'm looking to see if you're going to use all three cuts, whether you're going to use one cut, but I'm looking to see how you're going to use these garnishes. And I'm looking for a really, really tasty dish. You've got your work cut out now, haven't you? Chef loves lamb. How much do you love it? We're going to give you 10 minutes to come and choose your ingredients and then one hour to make us a wonderful plate of lamb. Up you come. Grab your ingredients. It's quite daunting, really. It's hard to, hard to kind of think on your feet, but I'm going to do my best. I'll be like that. It's going to be two lamb dishes for me. <laughs> you guys have got to prove to us that you really want to be here, because at the end of this, one of you is going to be going home. One hour. Our expectation is high. Off you go. I think Marcus, you can make or break you. Yeah, it is very important to stay on his good side. That's it. You just got to try and nail it. Jonathan, done anything like this before? Been thrown ingredients and say make something. Yeah, it's kind of a common occurrence, but you've usually got all day or maybe it's a couple of days. You got an hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me what you're cooking. I'm going to cook the three, three different parts of the lamb. I'm roasting the shoulder at the moment, I'm water bath and the other joint, and then I've got the lamb chop, which I'm going to do in a pan. Lots of different vegetables at the moment, I'm just trying to channel. All three joints in one hour? Is it pushing it a bit? Yes. It's a challenge, Greg. It is a challenge, yeah. and it, is, it, it can be done. It's just what you do with them that counts. Yes. Confident? A <laughs> little bit. Good. Jonathan, he's picked up the challenge, Greg, and you know what? He's running with it, and I like that. He's going for the Moroccan-style flavours. I quite like the idea of those spices with that lamb. As long as the spices are not too hot, it's got to be delicate, and the balance has to be right. You've had ten minutes. Where does the time go? Ten minutes. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. I can't, I can't tell you I'm going to smash it. But today I need to produce one good plate of food and then it should be all right. Catherine, tell me what you're doing. Right, I'm going to just pan fry and roast a rack of lamb, fondant potatoes, I'm going to make a carrot puree, raw beans and make a, a sauce. Are you beginning to enjoy yourself in this competition, Catherine, now? Oh, of course, of course. Um, I've, never, I've never done anything like this and I know I don't know a lot and I'm self-taught but I've got nothing to lose. How many times do I get to cook for chefs in my life? This could be the last, so I'm just going to do my best. Catherine, some of the best chefs in this country are self-taught, and you're not out of your depth. If you cook a good dish, Catherine, it won't be your last. Catherine, I'm so impressed with the way she's working. You know what's really clever about what Catherine's doing? She's not cooking the whole joint. She's cooking just what she needs. That's clever thinking, I like that. For me, right now in this kitchen, she's on fire. Throughout the competition, I've done okay, but you know, to my standards, okay is not good enough. There's definitely loads to come. You know, hopefully in this next test, I, I can really give a really good dish and, and, and show what I'm all about. You've done a lamb dish for us already, Alan. Yes. Does that put you under more pressure? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't. You know, it can work in 
and two ways, look. What are you cooking for us today? French rack, aubergine puree, and I'm going to do roast shoulder as well. Okay. Some nice baby veg. I'm going to do a bit more refinement, keep the, keep the rustic cooking, but not to show it as much on the plate. Good cooking though. Yeah, yeah, rustic is good, yeah. Aaron has boned and rolled the shoulder. He's got an enormous lump of lamb as big as my head in the oven. The problem Aaron's going to have is he's going to get that big roll cooked in time. All he's going to do is potentially turn the heat up in the oven, hit it with too much heat, it's going to tighten up. Lamb needs to relax, it needs to be cooked at a lower temperature. That shoulder concerns me. You've got 20 minutes left. Just 20 minutes. It's quite a privilege to cook for Marcus Warren. You know, not many chefs get to do it. Wouldn't say I'm confident, but I've got to try my best. And I've got to nail this one and get it right. Scott, so far, you've done two desserts. Yep. Today, you're going to be cooking meat. Tell me what you're doing. I'm going to braise the, the shoulder, make a little croquette. I'm going to do rack roasted, some salsa puree, a bit of roasted salsa, braised chard, a bit of radish, and a cumin Madeira sauce. This sauce of cumin and Madeira, is that something you've done before? Yeah, a bit of sweetness, a bit of the cumin, I think works really nice with lamb. Do you think you can match that fantastic dessert that you did in your first round? I hope so. That's the big, big <laughs> question. Scott is making a salsa puree. I've never seen a salsa puree. It's got to be creamy, it's got to be rich. It sounds to me like it could go absolutely watery. The cumin Madeira sauce, I'm, gonna, I'm reserved on this one. I'm not looking for sweetness with the lamb sauces, I'm looking for the flavour of the lamb, a little bit of acid. I don't like the sound of that at all. Last five minutes, please. Last five minutes. Stop. Well done. Well done. First up is Catherine, who has made rack of lamb and braised shoulder of lamb with fondant potato, caramelized shallots, carrot puree, broad beans, and a lamb and tomato jus. I think it looks stunning. Really do. I think you've done yourself proud. But I think your seasoning's good. Mm. I think the rump is beautifully cooked. Mm. The rack is beautifully cooked. It's got a lovely texture. The carrots are beautifully finished off and cooked to perfection. And the sauce, it tastes delicious. I am amazed you pulled that dish off in one hour. I really am. Absolutely amazed. I think it's fantastic. That's lovely. It's lovely because the lamb has texture on the outside, yet it's really soft. Everything is lightly seasoned. Your sauce is slight sweetness and a slight tang of acidity as well. It's a very well-balanced, beautifully mm. flavoured dish. This is just passion, and I think you've delivered it there absolutely on the nose. Not in a million years did I expect Marcus to say, say what he said. Probably like the proudest moment of my life. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. It was amazing. Jonathan has made a roasted rack of lamb, an aubergine mint and lamb shoulder crush, seasoned with ras al hanout and tahini, served with saffron potatoes, scorched onion petals, and a salad of courgette, broad bean, and radish. The rawness of the, of the cutlet definitely stands out, but the thing that concerns me is the bone. It's not been cleaned and it's not been covered. It's not right yeah. and it's not perfect, but I really see where you're going with the dish. The combinations for me, they do work. I think you've got a lovely balance there in, in the aubergine. This is a, a sort of nod to a summer Moroccan dish. 
I really like that dish. I actually think the freshness of it works. I love the saffron potato. I like the broad beans with the, the hint of mint. One thing I can't get on with at all is this aubergine with a shoulder of lamb in it. It's the glutinous texture of the aubergine around the lamb, which I don't find particularly pleasing. You have a different approach. When you are this different, you're not going to please everybody, that's for sure. Happier that it was that way around, that Marcus really liked it. So I still need to convince Greg that I can cook and give him tasty food. So, yeah, there's still, still lots to be done. Scott has cooked roasted rack of lamb, lamb faggots with braised rainbow chard, roasted salsify and salsify puree. That's a little rare for me, that, that rack, and I'd like the fat to have a little bit more colour. OK. Scott, I'm a little bit in two minds with this dish. I like the idea. It's the execution that um, is missing because the, the charred stem is not cooked enough. I think the little meatball, yes, it, ha it has flavour, but it just, I think it's just sloppy. It lacks finesse. The sauce has a flavour of the lamb, but it doesn't have the cumin flavour that I was expecting coming through. The Madeira, not my sort of flavour. Sweetness with, with lamb doesn't sort of work as a combination. There are bits on that dish that I really, really enjoy. It was supposed to be a croquette, it's, it's turned into a lamb faggot. Doesn't look great, but it's really meltingly soft and I like that. Um, I think a mixed bag. Mm. I, I, I think elements of pure yumminess and elements of could do better. Mm. Cheers. Didn't do as well as what I could have. Some silly mistakes I shouldn't be making. I ran out of time a little bit, didn't get to try as much as I should have, but no, a bit disappointed as well. Finally, it's Aaron who has chosen to cook rack of lamb and lamb shoulder with carrots, courgettes, aubergine puree, roasted potato, potato balls, and a Madeira sauce. I just think the dish just has a look of uh, sloppiness about its presentation. When I see a um, shoulder that's been boned out and rolled, you need to make sure it's cooked. You've served basically raw lamb fat, which is not good to eat at all. I'm quite surprised that potatoes being so small are undercooked as well. They're not cooked at all. The interesting thing about the, the, the dish is the sauce. It's split. And I like that with the lamb sauce. I love the jus and the fat breaking. It's, it's what I expect from lamb sauce. But I think the flavour's rubbish. I don't think the flavour's good at all. Madeira is sweet. That's the one liquid I wouldn't put with a lamb sauce. You cooked a lamb dish before, and uh, we, we said there that we, we needed real attention to detail that every little bit on there has, has got to be approached and cooked with precision. We've, we've got the same kind of mistakes happening again. Mm. Can it get to the stage and then not produce a great dish, which is very disappointing? My test was very interesting because we got all different plates of food done their way. We had a good day. Was there anyone that really stood out for you? There was one. Catherine. Absolutely came into her own zone today, Monica. She delivered a sensational plate of food from a visual point of view and from a cooking point of view. In my round, Catherine has had no experience in mm. pastry. In saying that, she managed to, to deliver the thinnest of, of the caramel wafers. Not the neatest, but the best to eat. I'd really like to see some of, some of that cooking from Catherine. Mm. So, fair to say she's going through. I think so. I think out of all the chefs today, Catherine, for me, sailed through. So who else did you like? Today, Jonathan, for me did a good job. I liked the dish, Greg didn't. If Jonathan had cooked his lamb properly, he would have served a fantastic dish. Jonathan, for me, on, on my test, uh, was so nervous. He was shaking so much, you know, it was bouncing uh, on the spatula. In saying that, of the four chefs, he was the one that remembered the processes in the last moment. I like his thought process. He makes food exciting. He just needs to get the technique right. Well, that leaves us Aaron and Scott. Mm. Out of all of the chefs, I think Scott was the one that knew exactly where he was going today. But for me, the flavours didn't quite come together and the lamb was undercooked.
for the skills test. It looked lovely, lovely golden strip of caramel, but there was no way that Greg and I were willing to eat that, um, which, which is a bit of a worry. I would like to think that I did enough to prove that I can do a bit more and to get it right the next time, but I don't, I'm not thinking very positively at the minute. So that leaves us with young Aaron. I'm yeah. very curious to see how he did. Well, you know, Aaron has already done one lamb dish and today was his second. The whole execution of his dish across the plate was pretty poor and quite average to be really fair. He's not had much experience in the pastry, if any. It's really painful to watch a young chef sort of come in and, and struggle on, on a test like that. You want them to do well. I don't, I don't think I deserve to stay. You know, I've, I've made too many mistakes and within the pressure, so no, I don't think so. There is potential. Uh, the question is, it's which one of them do we take the chance on? Welcome back. Some of you have really started to improve in your cooking and in your confidence. But there were errors through the kitchen today and they were very obvious to see. So, the chef leaving the competition is... Aaron, thank you. Got it to be going home, you know, it's just the way it is. Overall, the experience has been really good and, you know, some, something where I can take a lot of positives from. Congratulations, Chef, you're quarter finalist. Well done. <laughs> so relieved. My heart was going 20 to the dozen there. Now, I don't make mistakes, I learn from them, and I come back stronger and better. I'm over the moon. I just want to show people that I can cook good food. And I did that today. To be a quarter finalist, I must have kind of achieved something massive, so I'm really happy. Next time, five new chefs battle it out for their place in the competition. Those colours are far too garish. It's the only dish I've ever seen that needs a volume control. I think you've done a fabulous plate there. Mm. You should know that you've got to wash yeah. it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not happy with this.